Seven million dollars. That's not the budget of a small film or the price tag of a luxury mansion. It's the estimated GDP of the Imperium, a player faction in EVE Online, an MMORPG game set in the vast expanses of space. EVE's players are notorious for their epic space wars, intergalactic casinos, and cunning conmen. They're not just playing a game, they're participating in a full-scale economic simulation on a galactic level. This isn't your average marketplace. Almost any item, from spacecraft to materials, even gargantuan space stations, can be traded freely. Thanks to this intricate system, players have built empires that would put some small nations to shame. The economic power these in-game nations hold is so immense that the cost of their wars can rival that of real-world conflicts. But how does this all work? How does a game manage to simulate an entire economy? And what happens when the issues that we face in the real world are mirrored within the game's universe? Stay with me as we launch into the universe of virtual economy, exploring the parallels between the intricate commerce of EVE Online's starships and stations and our own real-world economies. But before we get into that, I just want to say a huge thank you to the members of the channel who help support my work and keep the channel going. If you're interested in becoming a member, check out the join button below the video. In order for us to understand how the economy of EVE works, we first must understand the basics of how a real-world economy works. The basis of any economy is transactions. People use money to buy things that they want and need. That's all it is really, a large network of producers and consumers that trade their goods with a set currency, i.e. money. That being said, let's break it down a little more. At the core of an economy is resources. All economies must manage resources, which are typically categorized into four types. Land, natural resources. Labor, workforce. Capital, machinery, factories, transportation, etc. And entrepreneurship, skills to bring all those resources together. Once the resources have been gathered, they must be processed. This involves creating goods or services using the resources available. Once goods and services are produced, they must be distributed to consumers. This can be done through various channels like markets, stores, or online platforms. Then we come to consumption. This is where you, the consumer, buy the item or use the service. There are more parts, but that's the basic outline. This kind of setup though can be found in many aspects of life even this YouTube video. The first step was I gathered the resources to create the video, i.e. the sound, music, visuals, and idea. The next step was production. I wrote the script, recorded the voiceover, and edited the video. Then we move on to distribution. I uploaded the video to YouTube, where they then distributed it to you. Finally, you saw the video and clicked it, meaning you are now consuming it. This all works the same way in EVE Online. Resources are represented by the various materials and items that players can gather or produce, such as ores, minerals, planetary commodities, etc. Players can mine asteroids for minerals, harvest gas from clouds, or extract resources from planets. Players then use these resources to manufacture a wide variety of items, from simple ammunition to massive spaceships. This production often requires specialized skills that players can learn and improve over time. Once items are produced, they need to be distributed to consumers. This is done through the game's market system, where players can list items for sale in various star systems. The price and availability of items can vary widely from one system to another, creating opportunities for trade. Players consume these items by using them for various purposes, like outfitting their ships, engaging in combat, constructing structures, or furthering production activities. The demand for different items can fluctuate based on various factors, such as changes in game mechanics, player-driven events, or shifts in the border metagame. The impact of such a realistic economy system is that in-game wars are fought and won in the same way real wars are. Unfortunately, many of them start the same way too. Disputes over resources. Let me tell you about the largest battle in EVE Online history and possibly the largest battle in all of gaming. It started with one missed upkeep build, leaving the door wide open for enemy attacks. Word of this opportunity spread quickly among player groups. Seeing the chance to gain control over this valuable location, and of course, its valuable resources, they mobilized their forces. What started as a small dispute quickly spiraled into a massive war, drawing thousands of players into conflict. The battle continued non-stop for nearly an entire day. Players from around the globe logged in to join the fight, bringing their most powerful ships into the conflict. The cost of ships destroyed in the battle totaled an astronomical amount in the in-game's currency, equivalent to hundreds of thousands of real-world dollars. The ripple effects of this battle were felt through the entire game economy. The demand for materials to replace lost ships led to a spike in market prices, demonstrating the intricate economic systems at play in EVE Online. This battle, known as the Battle of BR5RB, serves as a stark reminder of how closely the game mirrors real-world economies and warfare. In EVE Online, as in reality, every action has consequences, and even a seemingly small oversight can lead to significant outcomes. After hearing all of these stories and discussing how the flow of goods creates a realistic economy, you might wonder how players actually exchange goods and currency. Well, the answer to that is even more interesting. We have two types of economy in the real world, market economies and planned economies. While both of these economies can be modeled by countries, for simplicity's sake, let's look at them both within the lens of the American economy. In a planned economy, 
the government or central authority makes all the decisions about the production and distribution of goods and services. The central authority often owns and controls all major industries. Prices, production goals, and resource allocation are set by the central authority rather than determined by market forces. We can see this across major companies such as McDonald's, Walmart, and Apple. These companies all offer marketplaces where consumers can purchase goods. The reason they're planned economies is because they control every aspect of their supply chain, menu, pricing, and franchise operations. There's no central McDonald's where everyone goes to bid on how much they would pay for a Big Mac. McDonald's sets the price of a Big Mac, and unless they decide to change it, that's the price. It is what it is. Now, if we take a step back into the larger American economy, we find a market economy. Of course, I'm talking about the stock market where investors can purchase and sell their shares in a company. The difference here is that there's a central trading floor, where investors can go to bid over the price of shares. While the price of a Big Mac might be set by McDonald's, the price of one share in McDonald's is most certainly not. The price of a share is determined by how much people will pay for it, i.e. how much investors think the company is worth. This is what's called a market economy. In a market economy, economic decisions regarding investment, production, and distribution are guided by the price signals created by the forces of supply and demand. Private individuals and businesses own the factors of production and make decisions based on profit. Prices are determined by what consumers are willing to pay and what sellers are willing to accept. Now you might ask though, that sounds great, but how do investors actually buy and sell stocks? And how does this all relate to EVE Online? Well, in answer to the first question, there are two main ways it's done. Number one is a physical trading floor like the New York Stock Exchange. While it's mostly electronic these days, it used to be a bunch of investors sitting around yelling bids out. Number two is a fully electronic exchange like the NASDAQ. There's no physical trading floor, everything's handled digitally. Here's how it works. First, an investor places an order to buy or sell a specific number of shares of a company's stock through their brokerage account. The investor can place a market order, buy and sell at the best available price, or a limit order, buy or sell at a specific price. Next, the brokerage firm sends the order electronically to the NASDAQ. When an order is received by the NASDAQ, the system automatically matches the buy or sell order with the best market maker price. If a better price is available elsewhere, the market maker must adjust their price or pass the order on to another market maker. Once a match is found, the trade is executed and the shares of the stock are exchanged for money. This process is automated and typically takes fractions of a second. After the trade is executed, a confirmation is sent to both the buyers and sellers brokerage firms who then notify their clients of the completed transaction. When the developers of EVE Online were looking for a system that would help create the free market they envisioned, they found the NASDAQ particularly interesting. This is why the market system in EVE Online is pretty much a carbon copy of the NASDAQ. While the in-game version doesn't require brokers, as CCP, the studio behind EVE, act as a central brokerage, this is pretty much exactly how the market functions. Players buy and sell goods in the same way that investors buy or sell stocks. This has allowed the game's market to become so realistic that CCP hired a real economist to work on it. Unfortunately, with an economy so realistic, it also manages to model many real-world issues, as well as some issues that are unique to a virtual economy. A big issue that EVE faced at one point is one we all know too well in the real world inflation. The problem was, in the early days of the game, there were not enough systems to remove ISK, the in-game currency, from the game. This meant that players could farm ISK, which of course leads to the currency becoming worthless because there's too much of it in circulation. To combat this, the developers implemented systems to take ISK out of the economy, things like taxes and fees. These are called ISK sinks. Another issue the game faced was called the Age of Scarcity. Basically, the game had a problem where resources, money, fuel, and anything else you could need to play the game was extremely easy to acquire. This might be great for a real world economy. I mean, imagine a world where there was cheap housing, cheap food, cheap fuel. That sounds fantastic, but it doesn't make for a very interesting game. Part of what makes a game fun is challenge. And in an economy where there's an abundance of everything, there's no challenge whatsoever. So to fix this issue, the developers at CCP decided to create the Age of Scarcity. This update made resources much harder to obtain. The goal of this change was to drive conflict and of course, increase interest in the game. Unfortunately, this was not the case as the inflated prices of space ships would cause conflict to become much more risky. While this was no big deal for larger corporations with trillions of ISK, the average player didn't have the budget for conflict. EVE Online stands as a testament to the power of player-driven economies in virtual worlds. Its intricate, dynamic economy, which mirrors the complexities of real-world economies, has provided players with a unique and engaging experience for nearly two decades. From the rise and fall of in-game empires, to epic space battles that have made headlines around the world, the economic systems of EVE Online have played a central role in shaping the game's history. Yet, just like real-world economies, 
Eve's economy has faced its share of challenges. Inflation, resource scarcity, and market manipulation are just a few of the issues that have tested the resilience of the game's economic structure and integrity of its players. The developers at CCP Games have continually adapted and evolved the game's systems to address these challenges often drawing on economic theories and principles to guide their decisions. Despite these challenges, or perhaps because of them, EVE Online's economy remains a fascinating study of economic principles in action. It offers valuable insights, not just for gamers and game developers, but for economists, sociologists, and anyone else interested in the dynamics of complex economic systems. As we look into the future, it will be interesting to see how EVE Online's economy continues to evolve and adapt. Whether you're a player building your fortune in the depths of space, an economist studying virtual economies, or just a casual observer, there's no doubt that EVE Online will continue to offer a wealth of intriguing stories, lessons, and insights for years to come.